Welcome back. Welcome to our topic 2A. Here we'll talk about the business challenges and establishing a framework to address these challenges. I want to ask, what are you hearing at your organization? What's top of mind? What are the challenges your users or the community of users are sharing with you? Let's take a closer look at one of our dear customer, New York Life Insurance. They're based out of New York City and going through a digital transformation journey. As part of this journey, they focus on several business outcomes covering customer centricity, agents' productivity, and accelerating the underwriting process. In this journey, they started looking at the data challenges, which could mean quality issues, which could mean lack of business understanding, availability of business processes and corresponding context or documentation, and also silos around data where data is stuck in several systems and applications. What I really like about the New York Life use case is their ability to understand the root causes around data and mapping that to business challenges. In the assessment, they identified their business processes with limited validation controls, limited accountability around data, poor data quality goals, outdated technologies, data silos where data is stuck in several systems and applications. The good approach here is mapping those root causes to business outcomes. So for example, New York Life did, they identified the data quality challenges and mapped that to customer experience. Agent were spending significant amount of time looking at the data, cleaning the data, as opposed to creating predictive models that would better serve their customers, increase the underwriting process timeframe and also the ability to be more operationally self-sufficient. Now, looking at these challenges and mapping that to business outcomes, it begs the question, how do we establish a framework to address these challenges? When establishing a framework, you need three key components, people, process, and technology. This is inspired by Gartner and many market analysts who talk about the role of people, process, and technology. For many firms, we see data is at the core for many business functions, whether it's driving insights analytics or being compliant with regulations or creating a culture of data. Lastly, digital transformation where you lift and shift data to cloud. Now let's zoom into the framework from the perspective of New York Life. They started outlining several themes. For example, aspirational outcomes, um, measurable outcomes, capabilities and levers that they could use to drive or create traction around data governance. Let's start looking at the aspirational outcome. In the beginning, New York Life identified the aspirations for the enterprise, which could mean increasing the reputation of the organization, increasing the odds of success against the competitors, and then creating a culture of data so people can easily self-service and trust the data they're looking at and also make data-driven decisions. Also increase the value and, and reduce the cost around technical debt. Compliance, be more compliant with regulations like GDPR, CCPA, and just treating data as an asset at the enterprise level. And lastly, focusing around the innovation aspect of data. Two, we have the measurable outcomes. Now, from my perspective, these are some of the outcomes that help you understand that your data governance program is working. And there's also a lot of talk in the market, like it's how hard it is to create a ROI around data governance. From my perspective, if you have some of these measurable outcomes, it's a good sign that your data governance program is working. So here you have clear accountability around data. That's a good sign. Second, you have a common business language. A lot of times the challenge is people speak different definitions, different language, depending on what business function they are part of, business unit or business groups. It could be for you as a customer or me as a client. How do we tailor that language together? Then third, you have high quality data. It's another good sign that your program is working. And attaining commonality and bringing all the definitions together in a data glossary or a catalog, which gives you a holistic view around your data, where it comes from, how it changes over time. And lastly, documented controls around quality and privacy to ensure the data is used in the most ethical way. And also data that's available for usage is of high standard of quality. Then you have the capabilities. In my experience, 
Capabilities, we see this commonly across our customer portfolio. Whether we're going into a workshop, we're reviewing a request for a proposal, or any of the customer meetings. A lot of these things are top of mind for data executives. So for example, you have data governance and stewardship, you have metadata management, you have data quality management, master data management, and data protection. Lastly, you have levers. For example, you have uh, levers where you need a uh, outspoken leader who can evangelize the understanding of the framework to the broader community of users. So they align with that vision. Next, you need the organization, the diversity, uh, representation from different pockets of the business. And then you have people in different roles, sometimes part-time or full-time. The idea here is to empower those users in their day-to-day -day jobs. And then the last two is business processes, documenting processes that handle your data, whether it's PII data, sensitive data, or critical data for the organization. And lastly, the technology piece, which is about creating different technologies that increase productivity of the end users. So in a nutshell, New York Life identified these outcomes, capabilities, and levers.